Right, so let's let's get you around my desk. Please come around my desk. Get into a position where you can see what I'm doing. Get behind me and in front of me. Some of you can see. Can you see? That's the most important thing. Yeah? And hear me. So just before we start, I will just show you, this is my sketchbook, this is a, this is a book made from paper um, called Kadu, K-H-A-D-I, which is handmade cotton, Indian watercolour paper, it's made from recycled cotton, so it's got a rougher texture on it, um, but it's really nice paper to work on. There we go. I'll leave this on my desk, you can have a, a wander through it, at your leisure. Now all of these were pen first, that's... Okay. All right. Now, um, each of these in here didn't take me any longer than about an hour. Okay. All right. Now we've got two hours. Well, maybe slightly less for the break. Okay. The important thing is not to rush. All right. You don't have to get it finished tonight, but it'd be nice to see what you all end up with. Let's let's find Les and Okay. I teach at the Marlborough College Summer School and I brought a group here last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And all of these are pen first. And the other great thing about sketching with pens, you don't have to do something like this, you can do little things like this, I call them thumbnail sketches. Um, that's the last one I did. Okay. So yes, I'll leave that on the side so if you want to have a flick through you can do. Right. So whilst you're up here, the pen that I'm working with is one of these, they're called Pigma Micron Archive Link. I'm using a 04 most of the time. Um, I would say anything from a 2 up to a 5 is probably okay for what we're doing. I always say that if you're working on a paper that's slightly rougher in texture, you need to go up a pen size. Okay, if you're working on a smooth paper, use a thinner pen. The thinnest one I've got is a 01. Yeah, don't use it very often, but I do use the 04 a lot more. Now this one, which I've done earlier, has been done with the nibs and the bottle of ink, which is why the pen mark is finer. Can you see? Yep. Yeah. That's fine. Alright, so it's a finer pen mark. But the other thing with the, the nibs and the bottles of ink is that with the nibs especially you can get much more of a gestural mark. You can vary it more subtly than the, the marks you're making. Um, so with these for instance you can vary the mark you're making. By the pressure you apply but also the angle. Okay. So if I just hold this like I normally hold a pen. Let's do this. Gives me like this is zero four. But if I hold it up the top here, much more of an angle, you can see it breaks the pen marker. Or if I hold it right close to the point and lift it up, press down a bit harder, you can see it's a stronger mark. So you can vary the mark. Um, if you've got um, different sizes of pen, not so much for this one really, but if you're doing something further away in the distance, say you're doing distant hills, then you go to a thinner pen. So this is a zero one. Let me show you the difference. Subtly, subtle difference. There we go. Okay. Right. Onto the picture. So this is a. Hello. This is a photo of Edinburgh Castle, and it's got. I've chosen this because it's got lots of stuff. It's got perspective in it. We all love perspective, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have a brief word about perspective in a minute, and. We've got a variety of stuff in here. Um, there's some the rocks it's sitting on. Um, you've got quite a few windows. Um, you've got round bits as well as squared and triangular bits as well. Um, so there's a variety of stuff in here. Um, a word on perspective. Where people go wrong, I, I find, is um, 
When, you, when we're doing, dealing with two-point perspective, you see two sides of a building, you see three vertical lines, okay? You've got the, the extreme ends of the building, you've got the one roughly in the middle somewhere. Where people go wrong, so you go up that middle line to where the roof is, people go up instead of down, okay? So when you're doing something two-dimensional, so look at these towers on here. Um, so you've got one, two, three vertical lines. You go up that centre one, where it meets these top bits, they go down like that. Okay? The top bits, they're like chimneys. Classic mistake, people always do this the wrong way around the chimneys. The tops of the chimneys are like that. Now, these use you guys over here seeing this the other way up. Okay? Just toss them in this, right? The mistake people make is they do this. They do it the wrong way. Okay? So, if you're not 100% confident, of your pen work. In other words, if you don't want to go in straight in with the pen, you can do a few pencil marks. So the next stage is where to start. Now what I would suggest is, it depends on the size of your paper, you can, if your paper is A4, so I'm hoping that most of you have got roughly at least A4 in size, you can put your picture at the top, you can just drop lines down and start making marks like this. As long as you know what, what the marks are, try not to make it move. Okay, and you can do it roughly the same size. Now you guys have got a smaller picture than me. That's only so that everyone else can see. Okay, um, and drop it down. So if you want to make a few marks like this, the other thing is if you're working straight in with a pen, you can do roughly the same. But instead of doing lines, which you're going to be stuck with, do dots. Okay. So if I want, I've got a few dots just down here. Okay, like that. So I know where to start. And what that tells me is that I'm not doing this in a place where I'm going to run out of room over here. All right. Place your buildings roughly in the centre, maybe slightly below centre. That way you've got a, a bit of sky to put in, less foreground. All right. Classic mistake what people do is they go straight in and they do it too big. All right. And you end up with not enough room. Having said that, it's a sketch, it doesn't really matter if you run out of space over here, you just shorten the wall. What you don't want to do is to have the roof up here and nothing down here. Which again is not the end of the world, you just cut the bottom off. <laughs> but then if you're working in a sketchbook, you might not want to chop up your sketchbook. Okay? Alright, so I will let you decide whether you want to go in with pencil mark or whether you want to go in straight in with pen. I'm going to go straight in with pen. What, I'm, what we're going to do here, we'll break this down, okay? So we'll get our basic outlines put in first, then we put the detail in, such as windows and brickwork and stonework and else, and maybe a few figures or something like that, okay? And then later on, we'll do the painting, okay? Right. So those who go straight in with the pen, the first mark is the scariest one. Once it's on, it's on. Lightly to begin with. If you suddenly realise you've made a mistake, don't correct it, just ignore it. Okay? If you correct it, you'll draw attention to it. If you make a mistake. The other thing is there's a few round things on here. There's the round, the round castellated towel there and there's this bit which is round. Now in perspective, when you're looking up at something, it curves up to the middle and then down the other side. It doesn't go this way, okay, it goes that way. And it's the same with this one. And simplify. You do not have to do every single thing you see on here. In actual fact, if you compare this with this, you'll notice I've simplified this area a lot. I've redesigned Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> because it's my picture. I'm not doing a commission for someone. So keep your picture above so you can see where to place things. And see how lightly I'm doing this. And talk to yourself. Not necessarily out loud, just you know, say right, that bit goes along. I've got space there because there's a couple of windows, but my pen marks light enough. You don't have to count the constellations, just 
<coughs> roughly put them in. And um, this might sound a bit silly, but don't be too careful. When you're, too, when you're working with a pen, if you're too careful, your lines are too rigid. Okay? Then you, you see people going like this, trying to get a straight line, no matter if it wobbles, because it adds to the sketchiness of the picture. Okay? Very basic light marks, <coughs> just in case I've got a mark in the wrong place. Now this is this, this curvy bit, this is where all the cannons are. Uh, okay, I'm going to do uh, pencil marks first, I'll well, just do so. Very light pen marks. Perspective down here. Look at where the, the verticals are first of all. So from that centre vertical, they go as they go away from it, they go down. And that goes down. Some of the different angles. So if you're not sure, just change it slightly. changes of the walls, like there's another tower here, I'll put the basics in. There's another tower. Now it just changes angle slightly, and that's about as much as I want to do here. Really difficult to see what's going on in here, especially you guys with the, the smaller photos. Just make things up. Just look at the basics, I can see a triangle in there. Maybe with a slope on the roof there. And there's another bit there. And if things don't line up, just don't tell anyone. That's what I always say. Just the basics. And that's up a little bit too high there, but I'm not going to correct it. Basic outline, faint outline drawing is all I need at this stage. Yeah. I'm going to pick this up and show someone, everybody now, okay? Right. <coughs> Simple start to begin with. Pass it round, so yeah, that would be the best thing. Mm. Have a look, pass it around, that's the best thing. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to go in with pencil <laughs> just to get the absolute basics in, that's the far means do so. The only danger with doing pencil first is when you come to use the ink, you follow your pencil marks too closely or too accurately. Okay, if you can get a straight line in quickly, it's much better than getting one in slowly with the pen. Okay. Lightly, light touch to begin with. If you do put something in the wrong place later on, you might just be able to cover it up. I'm, I'm quite happy for people to take photos as well of each stage, all right? So if you've got you know, your phones with you, with your cameras on it, or cameras with phones on it, or whatever, by all means do so. As long as you don't turn it into a greeting card. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to sign it. Even better. Yeah. 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 It's very different place too. Mm -hmm. You can see basic shapes there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your, your photo is smaller than mine, so if you want to make it bigger, make your drawing bigger, that's fine, but I wouldn't go any bigger than the one I've done it, otherwise you give yourself large areas, you've just got to fill with paint. Okay. Right. Great, so, if you go off and do exactly what I do, 
Okay, do you want to come around my desk now? Bring your photos with you. Okay. Your reference material. A um, few people have gone in with your pencil, you're putting a little bit too much in with the pencil, you'll just end up repeating yourself later on. Just the basic, just sort out proportion and angles, perspective, okay, when you're doing pencil work. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to strengthen what I've already done and then I'll put the detail in, okay, and then it will, should be ready for a uh, paint. And if there's anything you've missed um, in terms of uh, you know, windows and stuff, you can put them in after you've painted as well. Right. And also we can, by the time I do this, it's probably nearly break time. So I'm going, just going back over my pen marks. <coughs> Just, you know, that when you start putting in lines you haven't put in with the pencil, just make sure you've got them going at the right angle. And probably the most important thing is your vertical line should be vertical, not leaning to the left or right. Like your handwriting does. <laughs> Couple of, uh, when, you, when you draw lines, obviously if you draw a line straight across and you've got stuff in front of it, that line's always going to show through. Okay? So, for instance, there is a window here cut into the line of the roof. So, I'm going to do the window first, just a little square, a little rectangle. There's another one just here. Then I can draw the line across and I can stop the line like that. These pens I'm working with are quite instant in how they dry. Um, but some pens are a little bit, they take a little bit more time. A couple of minutes sometimes, like the, the famed Castell Pit pens take a little bit longer. Just yet, I want to reinforce everything here. Normally I'll be turning this, but what I don't like doing is getting tied up. So I'm just going to turn that a little bit. that can really throw your picture out. It's all right.